Good morning, day three. Slept pretty good, really cold, probably 40 degrees. Got up around seven and started our hike around, oh, I don't know, 7.45. And we just got to a beautiful place called Vogelsang Lake. That's German. Something like the bird sang or bird song. Vogel is bird anyway. Another beautiful alpine lake. I don't see any um, snow on this side. Probably because no, the, none of the faces are facing north. We're going to have breakfast in a beautiful spot here in the sun. And then head on over to Merced Lake. Ready? Ready. We actually started to hike up the pass. It was so hot, we realized we were foolish not to jump in the water here. So we came back down. We left our packs up there. We came back down. Here's an incredible little beach. We're the only people here at this lake. Have it all to ourselves. About to go for a dip, cool off, and make our way. It's just a beautiful morning. Folden, Fogel Zing Lake. Go ahead. Hi, Peter Becca Polly. I'm going in the freezing cold glacier. Maybe not glacier. Snow, alpine. snow melt alpine lake. It is freezing. I can barely feel my legs. All right, count down. Five, four, three, two, one. It's crazy, isn't it? So you found a nice little sitting spot. Yeah. It's like sponge. It's like a little peninsula just for you, and it's spongy and soft and grassy. We're kind of chilly now, but just a few minutes up that hill, and we knew we would we would prefer this place is incredible. I could stay here the rest of my life with you and the kids, of course. Yeah, we definitely need three more here. <laughs> All right, I guess you got bit by something. Okay. It's not super bad. It's just hideous. <laughs> Your face was just the worst ever. I was like, what is happening? There's a scorpion on your neck. <laughs> Absolutely hilarious. We go down, we get in the freezing cold water, super refreshing. And then the sun just goes behind all these clouds and the wind picks up. <laughs> and now we're both cold. <laughs> You just can't make this stuff up. <laughs> oh, you look so good right now in this background. There she is, the most adventurous woman I know. Judy Murphy's got got a good run on you, but we have this place all to ourselves. Haven't seen a single person all day. It's pretty amazing. Oh, here comes the sun. We're headed up to Fogelsang Pass. So we got a little bit of climbing to do today. I think, what did I tell you? 300 feet of climbing, 400 feet maybe. And then we go down 3,500 feet. So today's gonna be a joint ankle and knee kind of day, but lots of elevation loss. Should make the breathing easier. And uh, should get a little warmer, about five degrees per thousand feet, I think so. Looking forward to that. Look at that. Almost at the pass. Good job, babe. Throwing our wind and range coats because it's super windy up here. <laughs> and lots of cloud cover for a while. So the wind was just cutting right through us. Look at that. Amazing, isn't it? What a gem. We love marmots. So do our kids. He's a cute little guy. A little bit chunky. Hi, buddy. Look at that peak. Isn't that beautiful? This is the pass. I'm gonna let you experience it with me. I think there's a big lake over there. Sometimes when you look at the topography, you don't always realize you're gonna see a lake even though it'll be far away blocked by mountains but you'll be able to view it yeah Ooh, landscape so epic you just feel like a dot on the map because that's what you are <sighs> this side of the pass is just totally different uh, terrain 
it's just all it's like these boulder fields kind of looks like the black hills in the dakotas i guess someone who loves yosemite would be like the black hills look like yosemite not the other way around <laughs> it's amazing how fast the landscape changes now we're in this alpine meadow with this beautiful little stream running through it this beaten down path this is kind of bear territory this is where we've often seen bears in places like this but just so fast the landscape changes it's like you're walking through ecosystems uh -huh. and there's gonna be a comment below like yeah you are dummy <laughs> this is like the most little picturesque area this trail is is like barely <laughs> barely two shoes wide almost have to put one foot in front of the other but it's just this quaint little forest scene tons of birds squirrels chipmunks incredible how much the landscape changes in 10 minutes lunch is almost ready looking good check this out it's called florence falls it's a really a water slide more than a fall but i mean it's got to be vertical feet 100 and then it just i mean maybe 150 really cool place nice little pool at the bottom i even saw some trout lewis creek has these awesome slides if it were warmer we'd be going down these bad boys it's an abrupt stop though ha! peter back paul you would love this the way the scenery has changed today is incredible look down here it's like thick forests rushing creeks massive pines we're like definitely out of the high country okay. into the woods big moment on day two of the hike we got our first glimpse of half dome that's it right there <laughs> and michelle was just mentioning like really seems far away and we have to walk all the way there then up it then down to the valley it's kind of amazing when you look and you like realize your body's going to carry you that far um and actually the distance from here to there is less than the distance we've already done yesterday and today so that's that's really just like one day's walk which kind of seems impossible but we're not even like that crazy fit and it's possible so mm -hmm. yeah. really loving these trees oh this is super gnarly holding on for dear life I think they're old cedars, but I don't know for sure. What do you think of the view? Oh, it's amazing. This might be the best view we've had. We have these awesome so... cedars. And we have that dome there. I don't know the name of it. I looked, I didn't see. It's gorgeous though. And then we have Merced Lake to the left and Half Dome to the right. It's just a gorgeous place kind of amazing technology uh, with my phone and Gaia GPS. I just checked to see our distance from where we are right now to the tip of that dome. And it's 0.8 miles, like if you could go straight. Uh, and it's absolutely staggering because it looks like, I mean, you just never would guess that that was less than a mile. It looks like it would take you a week to get there. And obviously it's not a straight walk, but it's just amazing. Look at that pine or fir. I don't know which one it is. Isn't that gorgeous? Hi. <laughs> I said, isn't that gorgeous? Not, hey, gorgeous. <laughs> you did not hear what I said. <laughs> What's that yelling about? You think someone's in trouble? Look at this bush. It's like something out of science fiction. Whoa. In the world is it's like dead. But then this thing is like growing on top of it and flourishing. Look at it down there. It's like, oh my goodness. I've never seen anything like that. I think uh, these are firs, if I remember correctly. But uh, kids, do you remember in Sequoia Kings Canyon, just the field? I mean, just look at the field of these things. It's just as many as you can imagine. It's crazy. Fine, don't fall. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> There's so many. Oh, I found a nice pointy one. You do not want to pick this fight with me. <laughs> you will lose. We're here at the Merced uh, Lake campground area. That's kind of cool. Half dome. 
10 miles away. That's exciting. And this is beautiful. I have to just confess. Oh, look, there's a marmot's nose right there. That's his nose. See him? I probably use the ladder. Yeah. I think it's kind of odd and, and you can leave your comments below if you just think I'm a jerk, but you know, there's so much emphasis on leave no trace and you know, backpackers don't disturb the vegetation and backpackers don't camp, you know, near the lake cause you disturb the view camp in this, you know, designated spot. But then, you know, just like construction ruins kind of left all over the place. They have these big black pipes that just, you know, kind of run all over the place. Um, we ran in, you know, like here and, you know, we saw this up at, um, uh, Fogel's A, you know, just propane canisters lying around and it, it's just, I don't know, it's a little confusing to me. Like they won't let you camp near a lake, you know, hundred feet away. That's fine. But they won't even let you camp hundred feet away. But then, you know, you're in the back country and you just have these pipes and electrical lines, you know, and just stuff all over the place. And it feels to me a little bit like a double standard. I mean, we've been out here, we've seen five people all day. Okay, this is not like an overused area. Um, and, you know, there's just like these really janky, nasty looking buildings out here that seem to be, you know, not in use for a long time. And, I don't know. It's, I'm not really trying to be critical of the National Park Service. I'm just asking the question and trying to understand why, you know, backpackers who spend, you know, 16 miles hiking in can't camp around a beautiful lake because it would disturb who? Other backpackers who want to do the same thing? You know, instead they take you away from the beauty and make you camp on these super hard packed surfaces, you know, and but then they kind of come in and pour a billion tons of asphalt all over and run cables everywhere. And I don't know, I just don't, I just don't really get that. And I know that what is done by leadership and moderation is done by followers and excess. And, but like, I'm sorry, backpackers who, you know, spend two days backpacking out to a place, like they don't trash the place. That's the kind of people who park and then, you know, drag a cooler with beer a mile, not backpackers. So I don't get it. If you disagree with me, that's fine. Leave a comment below and give me your input and give me your perspective on things to help me understand. Maybe I'm wrong or maybe I'm right. And maybe it's time the National Park Service, you know, let people be a little bit more wild in these places and camp near the beautiful places when you've got a permit, when you follow the rules and when you've hiked, you know, 16 miles out here. What do you think? Look at that glow and the background. We're thinking of cowboy camping here tonight. There's not any really great camping spots along the lake that are allowed. And uh, the tent stakes won't go into granite real easily. So we might cowboy camp, we'll see. Well, we decided to camp up here tonight. We spent a good 20 minutes looking for a flat spot and someone else has found it, of course. <laughs> but. That's the Merced River as it exits Merced Lake and continues on down. I mean, it's just like, look at this landscape. And uh, you can barely see it, but Half, half Dome's right over there. Uh, oh yeah, I can't really see it from this angle, but it's right over there where the sun is. And uh, let's hope that rock up there doesn't fall down. <laughs> It'll miss us for sure. It's just statistics. Look at that dome up there. That was interesting. There's a, a cut out of the rock down there that looks like a bear. I don't know if you can see that right there. Um, but it, it looks like a bear's body with a head and two ears. And it just caught our attention. That was really interesting. Uh, didn't creep us out, just uh, got our attention. Well, we almost cowboy camped, but we were able to set up the tent anyway, or instead, I guess. And uh, just show you the view. It's just kind of cool. So we are up on this, you know, I don't know, class two terrain, maybe even class three. You almost got to use hands to climb up here. I'll see if I can show you the angle. 
Yeah. And then we got this little tent up here next to a cedar. Just a sliver of a moon. There's an official word for that. I don't know it. Waxing crescent, maybe. I think it's a little thicker than last night. Michelle's making up the pesto noodles. And we're gonna sleep here with the noise of the Merced River lulling us to sleep.